celebrate other people. Especially when you feel as if you're entitled. And you deserve it. But I learned something. God does not push you up until you learn how to support somebody else. Think about how my 
small and minuscule it is, that hidden in the dark womb of a woman, of a mother's body, unbeknownst to this woman and unbeknownst to the world, that inside of her, inception is taking place. And at first glance and from the beginning, it is unknown to her what is taking place in her body. And although she goes through the vicissitudes of life, she goes through the daily routine, she does what she does every day, every morning, she wakes up, she still does not know what's taking place on the inside of her until one day she realizes, for some women who have gone through pregnancy, they can attest to the fact that after having gone through everything that you normally do throughout your day, it finally dawns on you that you're late. Y'all stick with me and after having realized that she is now late, she begins to go through different stages of her pregnancy. After she realizes that she is late, she now begins to feel nauseous. And after feeling nauseous, she finds herself always vomiting hard to keep anything down. There is an unexplained tiredness or fatigue that begins to hit her, but she cannot tell you what it is that makes her tired. But the only thing that she knows is I'm more tired than I used to be. Uh -huh. There is in a pregnant woman this type of craving for uncommon things. All right. Things that don't go together. Yeah. <laughs> she starts craving the pickles and, 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 and stuff and ice cream. Yeah. She wants to dip the pickles in Kool-Aid. Right. She starts craving stuff like chips and, and all of these things that you have never heard of because what she doesn't know is her body is going through the type of change that allows her to crave what is uncommon. And there is an increase not only in her uncommon appetite, but there's an increase in her senses. And she does not know what she is unaware, but deep down inside of her womb, she is pregnant. Wow. And thus it was with you, Elder Jalen, whenever your mother and your father decided to get together 18 years ago and be grown. His DNA and her DNA were compatible. They were so compatible until they connected with each other and formed you in your mother's womb. While she was growing as a woman, you were growing as a son. And in this process, which you thought it would be over in a nine month time span, I come to realize that this process is far longer than nine months. But whenever a life is created, that life has to go through this process until God calls it home. And so while your mother thought that being done with your labor and her pain of you would be over after nine months, she did not realize that it would take a little longer than nine months. I feel good now. She didn't, she didn't realize that not only after having to carry you for nine months, God would send her some help by the name of Betty Seabright to say, I'll carry him for a few more months. I know there are a lot of jealous folks that ain't never had nobody carry them before, so they can't say amen. But while it was that your mother and your grandmother were carrying you, God had to move your father away from carrying you because assigned to you was going to be some man that was going to be able to father him and you simultaneously. And so in the process of life, God had to introduce you to somebody who was anointed to carry you. And so God did not design you to be a Mephibosheth, but he wanted you to be a David. And so in order for you to be a David, somebody that loves you enough to carry you until you can find yourself by the sheep. And so while it is that you're going through this process of life for 18 years, you found yourself in the definitive and the decorum of what we call life. And definitive in the way that this cycle of life is conclusive and it is standard in its design. When you're talking about preaching, using words, I don't even know what they mean. What I mean is simply this. God's way of life is so definitive that the process itself does not separate you or make you unique. However, what makes you unique, Elder Jalen, is how you carry this process called life. So while it is that other young people turn to drinking, smoking, sex, and anything else, you turn your face to the wall because you knew that God had more for you than an alcohol body. Oh,
protocol that follows the life of somebody who is as anointed as you are. And as I'm preaching to you, I hope 10 young people hear me because God wants to encourage them as well that you cannot afford to listen to other people's protocol who cannot guide you and direct you down a path they've never been down. So why is that you have an anticipation to be great? You cannot continue to surround yourself around people who have never flown because they will always tell you from a chicken's perspective. The God says if you want to soar with the eagles, you got to begin to study the birds. You got to begin to study the behavior and the protocol of people who have lived a life that does not mean where they are. Without a lot of young people, I'm afforded the opportunity to not only serve as a pastor but as a candidate for city council at large. I was solicited your votes on October 14th, early voting, regular voting is November 5th. And so I'm afforded an opportunity to see how so many young people have settled for allowing their environment to define them. Right. Well, help me tonight. And so because we have these hopes and aspirations of getting out of Valdosta, Georgia, it's hard for you to see yourself out of Valdosta, Georgia, because you keep letting people in Valdosta, Georgia tell you how to get out of Valdosta, Georgia.
And so I want to tell you tonight, if you don't hear nothing else I preach to you, you're going to get to a point in your life where you realize it's just some stuff that you cannot keep in you. Some people would prefer that you swallow some stuff. They would prefer you hold your tongue. They would prefer you keep going with the flow. They would prefer you always be there for them. But every now and again, Jacob Smith, you got to come to the conclusion where you got to tell these people the way my body is set.
God's moving for other people. But it seems like he's taking his precious time out you. I know I'm talking good in here. And so you get you get tired because you see they here saying, I got a promise over my life, but truth be told, God, I'm tired of being broken hearted. God, I'm tired of being misused. I'm tired of being given the run around. I'm tired of sitting here having to fight my nighttime sleep. I'm tired of having to struggle with who I know I'm supposed to be or who I am right now. Keep talking to me the most. I'm tired. I find myself fatigued with so much because truth be told, the devil don't want me to see tomorrow because he knows my trouble has an expiration date. He knows my struggle has an expiration date. He knows every time the sun I get all this. He knows. And so children are no biggest issue, but one day your child will get saved.
she can see. And the text says that she is a widow. So at one point, she had a husband. That's right. But he's a long man. That's right. And so now she just lost her son. So, so the person that she was depending on to be her staff in her old age has now proven to be broken at his yeah. knees. Uh, she, she was depending on him and watch this other Jalen. This woman was broken, but even in the midst of her brokenness, she got God's attention. Yeah. Uh, God told me to tell you tonight, Elder Jalen, that in order for you to be what God needs you to be, sometimes you got to be connected to broken people because they know how to get God's attention. Yeah. And some of you, some of you, I just got to be honest with you. You're too cute for God to work for you right now. But I tell my church every Sunday, I wish I had about five ratchet folks. I was just like, I'm jacked up, but I need God. I'm broken, but I need God. I'm a whole lot of stuff I need him to fix, and I'm the only person that can't fix it is God. I wish I had the hope. There's a ton of truth in here tonight that says, I know how brokenness gets God's attention. Hold on, let me do a roll check real quick. Has God ever done anything for you in your life? And if he has, I tell you to jump in your feet right now and give God a shot. You praise God the hardest when you didn't know how you were going to put food on your table. You 
praise team. Because every day you had a testimony. Oh, no. But you got that you got that man. God sent you that husband. God sent you that wife. And you forgot about it. But you do your best work when you're broken. Three things I'm going to tell you all tonight. Now. I'm done. First thing I'm going to tell you is Jesus walks up. He's at the gate. First thing he does, the Bible says he sees her. First thing I want to let you know that in this season of your life, other gentlemen, God told me that he notices you. He says, Jesus saw the woman. God told me to tell you, don't you struggle with feeling overlooked no more for the rest of your life. There's a, trouble, a, trouble. There's a whole lot of people that struggle with if somebody sees me or not. Uh -huh. But God told me to tell you, I want you to settle down in your soul. Yes. That tonight I saw you before Willie and Albertina ever got together. Yes. She went out home again, she was Albertina again. <laughs> he says, I saw you before they ever got together, and I had to let them get together. And watch this, it's so crazy because they broke up a few a little while after because it wasn't about their love life, it was about the love I had put in I, I saw you when church overlooked you. I saw you when they threw your name in the mud. I saw you when they lied to you and lied on you. But God told me to tell you tonight, I see you and I notice you. And I wish I had about 10 praises right there. And understood it was in my brokenness. And it got God's attention. Same thing, I want to tell you, while I'm running to my closes, not only did God notice her, but the Bible says that Jesus notified her.
songs of old that pulled you over. 